Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And anyway, ta da da! I just got a new desktop, which is an iMac from my boss. Thank you, boss. Okay, I actually have got it since like two months ago, but there are so many things happened in my life. I just moved to Singapore and then had a business trip to Indonesia, and I'm then going back and forth from Indonesia to Singapore and so on. So it's just like recently I installed the R Studio, the full version of it, and so it is not like as in my MacBook where I just install the console on it. So okay, I think enough for the chit chat. And today on this video, as a request from Harry in Peru. Okay, hey Harry, I hope this video will answer your questions in the previous comment. And we are going to learn about how to convert a KML file into a shape file, or even a data frame perhaps. Um, but I think I will be focused on how to convert the KML file into an S3 shape files, and then I think I will also try to make it as a nice plot using one of my favorite uh, functions for uh, plotting, which is ggplot. And let's see what we will do this time. I'm using the same KML file that I made in the previous tutorial, uh, the Jakarta Administrative District. And as usual, let's start this by loading all libraries needed. Maybe we don't need all of them, but I'm actually a very absent-minded person, so I often forget which function belong to which libraries. And oh my god, I hope this display is clear enough because this is my first time using this PC for the video and I still cannot figure out the optimum extent. But as usual, of course, the link for the script is available in the descriptions. You may check it later. Okay, we will set the working directory and then we can start checking the KML file using the stlayer function. And then it shows that our data is actually a three-dimensional polygons. I will explain about this later. And if you would like to read it, you can use the stread function from the SF package. And then this is how you can create the plot. I'm not actually satisfied with this kind of data. And let's see this type okay this is the structures of the data and similarly you can also read it by using the read OGR from the RGDAL package and it will directly give you a formal class of special polygons data frame as I mentioned previously that this Jakarta .kml file is actually a three-dimensional polygons file and one thing you should know about the three-dimensional polygons is that you cannot convert it directly into a shape file in our studio you have to drop the z parameters because it just allow the x and y coordinates and how to drop it is by using the command of stzm and then also, if you would like to make it as a polygon data frames, you can force it as a special polygons. But this is actually not uh, really important in this. Okay, this is important, but it will be important in the next step. If you just want to write it as a shape file, you can directly uh, run the functions of st write and you just have to specify the DSM and then also the layer should be written in full SHP .shp. so we've got our shape files converted from KML into shape file using the SD write files and when we 
read it by the OGRs. Of course, we can also write it, write OGR. And then if we would like to get the polygons only, we can just use the spatial polygons uh, functions. But uh, you can skip this uh, step and just directly write the file as a shape file using the write OGR function. Okay, it's the same. You have to specify the uh, DSN, but you can just write Jakarta, not have to mention the .shp. Okay, this is just an example because in the next I will uh, guide you how to plot it and it might be not the best way and it also might be not the most efficient way it's just one of the way and it's used one of my favorite uh, functions from my one of my favorite libraries ggplot2 and plotting it we can start by read the shape files using the read OGR functions from rgdal uh, we read it as sp and it will give us a formal class spatial polygons data frames and remember that you can directly use your previous variables that you read using the same uh, read ogr functions that you read from a kml file there should be the data that have the class of special polygons data frames. I'm going to modify this data a bit. I will join union all polygons with the same name, uh, which is Kepulauan Seribu Administrative. So in the end, there will be only six features or six polygons. And when I joined it, it will become a spatial polygons, not a spatial polygons data frame. So this is an example of how to convert a spatial polygons into a spatial polygons data frame. And then uh, to plot it using the ggplot, uh, this function requires uh, the data to be in a class of data frames and we can do that by using the 45 functions given by the map tools library so then we can extract the coordinates and then also you can uh, get this data uh, combined into a new data frames and this region CDF is our final data that we will like to plot in uh, ggplot functions. So there are actually two choices. First, you can arrange the name of all the districts or regency into a legend with a different color as given here uh, or second you can uh, give a label for each polygon using the ggrepl library and it is like quite handy and makes the map uh, nicer in my opinion so we can save it as a pdf uh, using the ggsave but the problem is if we Suppose we have a data uh, we download somewhere from an internet, as an example here, I got it from the Ministry of Forestry uh, websites, and if we read it, it's a uh, KML files where each of the polygons names are just noted or given name as 1, 2, 3, and so on until about more than 1,100 something. But if we click it, in each of the polygons some of them I have a name so how do we solve this kind of problems that our KML file doesn't have a name in its name variable and this is the time when you have to consider that a KML file is a XML file and for editing it you need another library which is XML library and let's see if I can help you with this in the future if I'm not so busy. But 
yeah I've already posted a video about how to read an XML file and then we have to understand our about this uh, data really well before we can proceed into editing the XML file itself okay thanks for watching and bye bye see you in the next video